everyone, Susan Seiler here. This week, for you, we are, I am doing a science segment equipping video. It is my hope that at the end of this video, you will be equipped not only to prepare yourself each week for the science experiments, but to deliver them to the, your student. The key is having a flow. What's going to be your flow each week? Let's have a pattern that is repeatable. What's my pattern? Here it is right here. Set up. First is to help set up the experiment. This should be fun. We want to captivate them and engage them to get them interested in going on a journey with us to explore this experiment. How do we do that? Well, we tee it up. We talk either in a story way or you can do it just directly about what the purpose is, what are some of the key words and ideas. This is a grammar level and this setup should be introducing that grammar to them, the grammar of the present of this experiment. Uh, so we're entering cycle two, week three, this coming week, and it's about Saturn. It's uh, number nine, see-through. So what's the grammar here? The grammar here are things like continuous surface, Saturn, rings. The fact that Saturn's rings are made up of millions of pieces of ice and rock, all of those things are important to this experiment. So when and how you introduce them are going to depend on the age of your student. And you're gonna find a lot of these key words and main ideas in the why section of the Van Cleves book, or in the case of C.C. Livermore, you're gonna find it in the purpose, conclusion, and why sections of the science worksheet. The main thing is, is to keep it fun. This is, again, where we captivate our students. Make sure you include the purpose of the experiment in this time. So for week three, cycle two, week three, depends on the age of the kids, but if it was me, I would open it up, let's say I had masters, and I would say, all right guys, after of course I have done the scientific method a couple of times, all right guys, let's talk about Saturn. What do we know about Saturn? You're gonna have somebody say it's a planet, you're gonna have someone say it's rings. Listen to what they have to say, and then at some point cut it off. If no one has mentioned that Saturn's rings are made up of ice and rock, ask them, does anyone know what Saturn's rings are made of? And let them answer. Maybe they have a guess. And if they don't, we tell them, Saturn's rings are made up of millions of pieces of ice and rock. They're not solid. Then why, when we look at it through a telescope, or when we look at it in a picture, do its rings appear to be solid? That's what we're gonna find out today. Let's get started. Or um, if I had abecedarians, I might not ask them all those questions. I would just go in to say something like, guys, you know there's a planet out there that's called Saturn. Saturn is the most beautiful planet in the whole solar system. It has these beautiful rings that are all around the planet. And it has many, many rings. You can see that there's sometimes a space in between them. Kind of like the rings on my finger, where this is one whole ring and then there's a space and another ring. Saturn has lots and lots of rings around, around it and they all rotate around. Saturn's rings are not all one piece like my rings are. They look like it, don't they? But they're actually not. There are millions of pieces of individual pieces of ice and rock. Isn't that funny? So why do they look solid? Let's find out. Um, so that would, be, that would be how I might tee it up at either, either age, you know, at either age extremes, masters or um, abecedarians. And you're gonna have your own flavor. Maybe you wanna bring a little bit more into it. Uh, but but take a look at that why section for the key words and ideas. And again, make it fun. Second, let's, now we go, okay, let's find out. Now we have to help them visualize what we're going to accomplish before we can ask them to form a hypothesis. Now, for this particular experiment, your masters may be able to form a hypothesis based on um, the information that they already have in their brain. But again, this is supposed to be a flow, a pattern for you to apply to your different science experiments. And uh, you know that might change a little bit for your masters where you put the visualization depending on the experiment, but this still is a really great flow. 
So in order to help them visualize, I would tell them, all right, here are the materials that we're going to use, and I would show them the materials. I would talk them through what the procedure is going to be. We're going to be, you know, cutting these strips, and um, you know, then we're going to put the put them onto the pencil, and we'll have these strips. Imagine there's three of them, and you know, show them how we put it onto the pencil. Say, okay, so this is this is this is how we're going to figure it out. What do you think is going to happen when we spin this pencil? What do you think is going to happen when we X, Y, Z for completing the experiment? So the, the hypothesis can really be about what's going to be happening with the materials because that's what they're able to visualize at all levels. So this week I would ask them, when we spin the pencil, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think you're going to see black rings? When we spin the pencil, do you think this is all going to start looking like black rings? Do you think you'll be able to see the pencil through the rings? What do you think? So after they've had their guess, it's our job to model and to hone them back in a little bit into an intelligent hypothesis because what we're doing here is modeling what it looks like to apply the scientific method to a question. So let us model that for them. Uh, if they come up with a great hypothesis, good. If not, we model it. As far as the science sheet goes, if the science sheet serves you in this way, use it. If the students know the answer, let them circle it. If they don't know the answer, just have them write a question mark next to it. It does, this should be theirs as to what they know going in or what their guess is, not fill in the correct answer. This is not public school. This is made to serve you, not the other way around, not lead you or direct you. Um, so we take them the hypothesis, then we finally do the experiment. So we spin that pencil or whatever the, um, the experiment is, the actual action of the experiment, we do it, and then we ask them to observe what's going on. And we see if they can make connections. First, they're just gonna be observing, right? Grammar level. Oh, it's spinning. Yes, it is making, um, um, it looks like rings. It looks like solid rings. And oh my gosh, we can see the pencil through the rings. So they've observed these really good, important things. Have them draw a picture of that. Now it's time to connect the dots. How do we connect the dots for them? Again, we're leading them through the application of the scientific method. So we would read to them or discuss with them the why portion in the Van Cleves. So this week it's, your eyes are blending the color on the paper strips as they spin, producing what appears to be like solid rings. The movement, the speed of the movement makes it appear to be a continuous surface. How does that look? How can we apply that to Saturn? Oh, the pencil is like Saturn. And these, these strips, these individual things are like the individual pieces of ice and rock. So why do you think that Saturn's rings appear to be solid? Could it be because of the speed of the rotation? It's spinning so fast that they appear to be solid. And your students will be like, yeah, that's right, that's why, assuming they haven't already, assuming they're not master level and haven't gotten there themselves. So in for CC Livermore, they would circle that in their science notebook because you have helped guide them there. Not told them the answer, circle this right here, but have guided them there. And then our eyes blend or see clearly the objects as they rotate. What's happening? Do we see each an individual object clearly? Or our eyes just blending it as they rotate, okay? Whatever they guess or whatever they say or however they respond, let them circle that, but help them draw, draw out the conclusion and connect the dots. So explore that why and help them come to the conclusion. I wanna talk for a moment about observation. This week lends itself to a visual observation very, very well. Next week, week four, which is on the move, why, why planets continue to move. 
can lead itself first to a visual observation, but that second to um, an auditory observation where they might close their eyes in the experiment after you know, you've done it once and they can see it. Now, could they close their eyes and listen and see if they can hear whether or not there's friction, the paper in the pan causing friction. Can they hear the difference between the number of times things rotate? That might be another way to bring in all five of their, or all of their senses, probably not the sense of touch too, or excuse me, taste too often in these um, experiments, I don't think, but at least some of their other, um, their other senses into the observation time. So I hope this flow helps you. I hope this flow gives you a pattern to approach each science experiment. Take the scientific model. This is the grammar stage. Find the grammar level, key words, main ideas. Expand on those as, as appropriate to your age group. Make it fun and then dialectically walk them through the rest of the scientific method. But it doesn't have to be in order because they're going to get lost if we do it perfectly in sequential order. By helping them to visualize, then having them do and observe, and then we help them connect the dots, I think we can make science exciting for the kids and actually equipping for the parents also. Two other main points I wanna leave you with. One is, what's your state of mind going into this? If you are not feeling very confident or even feeling like there's much purpose to this with your age group of kids, you're probably not going to be in a state of mind that you're going to deliver an exciting science segment. If you come into this with enthusiasm and excitement about learning about God's world and helping your kids get some hands-on and helping them grow in their observation skills, they will also be excited. But their level of excitement will never exceed yours. So bring it each week, bring excitement, if nothing else, about learning about God's world. And also with your state of mind, we have our Lord on our side and who can fill us with his Holy Spirit and help us with our understanding. And we can turn to him and know that we can do all things through him who strengthens us. He called you to this tutor role, he did. And that means he will help equip you. You're gonna to have to do your part, but he will help equip you. So turn to him. Turn to him and ask him for that energy and excitement each week. And finally, what are your objectives? If your objectives of Earth are for them to really learn a lot about Saturn, actually that's not the point. Um, we want them to learn some about Saturn and we do want them to come away knowing some grammar and some facts more than what they came in with. But CC's objectives for the science experiment time is really twofold. One is, or threefold actually. One is our students would have the opportunity to memorize the scientific method. Secondly, that they would see it modeled, that they would see us as, as leaders taking them through the scientific method to get familiar with the flow and the pace of it. And most importantly, third, is to hone and improve their skills of observation. So as they start looking at things with a more open eyes and a more, even a, even a more careful discerning set of eyes or ears, that is when we have done a job well done in helping them hone their skills of observation. So keep those in mind. I hope this was helpful to you. You all are such a blessing to each and every one of your communities. And CC Livermore, you guys, rock. You're an especial blessing to me. So I will see you all on Friday. I hope you have a great blessed week. And if you have any questions about this, shoot them to me in an email. Okay. Have a good one.